Hey there, Tony Policastro here from Tony's Acoustic Challenge. Do you ever feel like you're strumming every song you play the exact same way? Well, don't worry, because in this lesson, I'm gonna share with you five strumming patterns that are gonna spice up your rhythmic guitar offerings, as well as give you a glimpse into what's possible when you understand the golden rule of strum direction. So let's dive right in. Now, for the sake of this lesson, on my fretting hand, all I'm gonna do is hold a G chord. My pinky finger will be at the third fret of the high E, ring the third fret of the B, middle finger the third fret of the low E, and index finger the second fret of the A. It's a nice full G chord. If you have another G chord variation that you like to use, you can go ahead and use that. We're really gonna be focusing on our picking hand for this entire lesson. The first strumming pattern is a nice basic one that allows you to add a little bit of depth to your bass offering. And what I mean by that is that this particular pattern called the boom chick pattern, it's gonna allow you to alternate the bass but work in some strums as well so you get a nice uh, almost two-dimensional offering from your rhythm guitar. So go ahead and hold that G chord and this is gonna be all composed of down strums on your picking hand. So at first you're gonna hit the low E string, the bass note, do a full strum of the chord, and then hit the D string, another bass note, and then another strum of the chord. So think of the booms as the bass and the chick as the strum. So it's gonna go boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick. Boom, chick. Or if you wanna count it more uh, proper with rhythm, it would just be one, two, three, four, one, Those are all downstrokes, and you're gonna find out why when I tell you the golden rule of pick direction at the end. The next strumming pattern that I want you to know is a variation of the boom chick. It's the boom chicka. I know it's just one letter, but it actually adds a whole different layer uh, to your rhythm guitar and almost gives it a nice accent that kind of, um, well, let's just call it, let's just say it spices it up a little bit. So the boom chicka is exactly what you did in the boom chick but instead of just doing a full strum and then going back to a bass note, you're gonna work in an up strum after each of the down strums. Let me explain. So for the boom chicka, you're gonna again, hold that G chord, go down on the low E string, a full strum and then an up, right? So chicka, and then down on the D string again, and then another full strum and an up, right? So boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom. Now you might be wondering, well, why would you do one or the other? It really depends on the musical situation. If it's a slow song, a lot of times I like to stick to the boom chick because it's more simple and, and just kind of stately. Whereas the boom chicka just gives that extra little spice. And another tip on that boom chicka rhythm pattern is that upstroke, you don't have to hit all six strings. I think that's one of the common myths when you see an upstroke on tab or something like that, is that it has to be all six strings, right? So it would, if I did all six strings, it would sound like this. It sounds a lot, it doesn't sound as delicate. So when you're doing those strums, you don't have to hit every string. Just make sure you get enough string, enough strings to get enough of the chord body and make it sound nice. And on that upstroke, I'm really aiming for just the E and the B string just because it's an accent. It's on the offbeat and it just kind of just throws a nice little spicy accent in there. So that's the boom chicka. The next strum that I want you to do or I want you to learn is, well, I'll call it the official term and then I'll give you what I like to call it. It's the syncopated strum. That's a lame term. Nobody says syncopated strum. So we're gonna call it the bluegrass rhythm technique. Now, the reason I use this in bluegrass rhythm is because it is syncopated, but it also adds enough space to the rhythm so that you can play it at higher tempos without feeling like your hand's gonna go into overdrive. So here's what the bluegrass rhythm sounds like, okay? Again, G chord. We're gonna do uh, a bass note strum, or rather just hitting the low E string, just single bass note, boom. And then a strum and then an up, down, up. Okay, so again, I'll do this a little bit slower and then I'll count along with it so you get the full context of it. So it's gonna be bass note on the one, strum on the two, and then an up, down, up on the and, four, and of the measure. And that'll sound like this. Okay, so I'll go through this slow, I'll do the pick directions and then I'll count along with it. So it's gonna go bass, strum, up, down, up. 
bass, strum, up, down, up, bass, strum, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, one, two, and four, and one, two, and four, and one, two, and four, and. Now again, at slower tempos, it sounds cool, but it's really effective at faster tempos because of all that space that sounds a little awkward at slower tempos, gets much tighter at faster tempos. So you can really burn through that strum and not feel like you're going crazy with your picking hands, something like this. It kind of has a little bit of a galloping feel to it. The next strum pattern that you need to learn, every guitar player has to have this in their strumming arsenal, is the waltz strum. Now you can approach a waltz many different ways, but I'm gonna show you the one tried and true waltz strumming technique that helps people dance. Okay, when, when a time signature <laughs> is actually designed to help people dance, you need to strum to help people dance. So this is what this strum pattern is good for. Now just so we're all clear, a waltz is counted one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Contrary to what a lot of popular songs are in, a lot of popular songs are in common time where we count them one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. A waltz is just three beats per measure. So again, we're gonna hold that G chord. For the first part of the waltz strum, we're just gonna hit that low bass note with a down strum. And then we're gonna do a full down strum across all the strings. And then we're gonna do a down up on the three and beat of the measure. Okay, so it's gonna be a down stroke on that low E string, a full strum across all the strings, and then a down up. So it's bass, strum, down, up, bass, strum, down, up, bass, strum, down, up. One, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, this is a great strumming pattern to learn. Even if you don't really have a waltz on your radar right now, I can guarantee you if you ever volunteer to play for a friend's wedding, if you ever play in a bluegrass band, if you ever play a dance, you're probably gonna have to play a waltz. And it's just good to know because it gives you a nice relationship with time and playing in time with different time signatures. Okay, the last strum pattern that I want you to learn actually bucks the, the golden rule of strumming, which I'm gonna get to here in a second. But it breaks the rule. And you, you might be thinking, well, how can you break the golden rule? Well, there's a lot of broken rules in guitar playing and we need rules to break them. So that's why the rule exists in the first place. This last strumming pattern is one that works really good if you're trying to add texture to a song. It's, it works really good if you're trying to uh, fit in with other guitar players that are playing full open chords. This strum pattern helps you add another sonic layer. Say you're at a jam or playing with another guitar player, this is a great one to have in your tool kit. So again, same G chord. And what we're gonna do is do a series of eighth notes, but all down strokes, right? So eighth notes, we'd count the measure one and two and three and four and. And we're gonna go down on each of those beats, both the upbeat and the downbeat, okay? And for the sake of, of tone, we're gonna be palm muting, okay? So we're gonna take this fleshy part of our palm and we're gonna actually place that on the saddle of your guitar, the, the area, the white part where the strings break over, right? You don't wanna be too far forward because if you palm mute up here, you're not gonna get any sound, really any tone. It's just gonna sound like you're doing a percussive thing. Whereas if you bring it back towards the saddle, you get some of that chord tone to start speaking through. That's what we're really looking for. We want that chord tone to sneak through. Okay, so again, right hand positioning or picking hand positioning for you lefties. Uh, go ahead and place your palm on the saddle of the guitar and with a downstroke, a steady stream of downstrokes, what you're gonna do is just hit the low three strings if you can. Even the low two strings is just fine. And that's, we count that like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and down, 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 down. Okay, so that's all down strokes, a palm muted type strum. Again, it works great on slow songs and it works great if you're just trying to fit in 
with uh, a couple of guitars that are playing open chords, but you want to add, like I said, another sonic layer, another sonic piece of the pie, if you will. Now, I did mention that that strumming pattern breaks the golden rule of strumming. Well, what's the golden rule of strumming? The golden rule of strumming is this. You go down on the downbeat and up on the upbeat, meaning it's a downstroke on every downbeat or numbered beat and an upstroke on every upbeat or and beat. So if I was, let's say, strumming along to a pattern that went one, two, three, four, much like our first pattern that we learned, the boom chick, that would all be downstrokes because they're all numbered beats. Whereas if I look at, say, the boom chicka, where it was one, two, and three, four, and, that would equate to down, down, up, down, down, up. Now, here's my prescription for you. I want you to practice these five strumming patterns, but I also want you to realize this. You can now create your own strumming patterns because you know the golden rule of strum direction or pick direction. All I want you to do is write down a rhythm. It could be one and two, three, four and. Well, that would sound like this. One and two, three, four and. One and two, three, four and. And just practice that pick direction. It's a great way to, to, to improve your relationship with time and rhythm and ultimately a great way to get comfortable with the flat pick and strumming in general. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I hope that it helped you offer a little bit more variety in your rhythm guitar playing. Now, please let me know in the comments below how this lesson went and which pattern is your favorite. Rhythm guitar is one of the five essential categories of guitar improvement that the Tony's Acoustic Challenge Dynamic Guitar Learning Method uses to make sure that you're experiencing fun and progress on a daily basis. If this lesson resonated with you, I know that Tony's Acoustic Challenge would be a perfect fit. So please click the link here in the video or in the description below to learn how Tony's Acoustic Challenge can help take your playing to the next level. And don't hesitate to request your invite today.